All right, I get asked all the time, what are some of the best models to look at? I know there's a lot of people interested in weather, and I love that. Believe me, that's why I love this show so much. But it's important to know how to use models. So in this episode, we're going to talk about some of the models that are out there that you can access for free. And we're going to talk about some of the better ones out there to use, how they performed last year. Noah verifies these every year. And some of the better performing ones that are working in 2024 to date. And then we'll show, I'll share with you some of my favorite models that I use when forecasting the weather on a day-to-day -day basis. And of course, these tropical systems. All right, so let's get to it. We are gonna start with the global models first. Again, you may be familiar with some of these, especially if you like to look at these computer forecasts when we're talking about tropical systems. So first and foremost, the American GFS, the global forecast system. That is the American run model. It does a pretty good job. The European, everybody thinks the European is king when it comes to tropical forecasting. We're gonna talk about this later. It did very well last year, but not so much so far in 2024. We'll have more on that later on in the episode. Then we have the Icon model. This one's also pretty good. It's the German model. We have the Canadian CMC model. And then we also have another short range model, the United Kingdom Meteorological Agency. This is going to be the UK Met model it does a pretty good job in the short range it only goes out it doesn't go out as long as the gfs or the european but nonetheless a uh, decent model to use when forecasting these things as well one of the things that we also use another tool in the t toolbox so to speak are ensembles and ensembles are a different kind of beast it's used to sample uncertainty. So when we're talking about tropical waves that don't yet have a center, ensembles are critical because the models actually run a number of times with slightly different initial conditions. So we do this, and the goal of this is to show a range of possible future weather conditions. So when we don't have a lot of information initially, like where is that center gonna form? We can put in there, we can tweak the initial conditions and see the different outcomes and the range of outcomes to give us an idea before we have more of that initial before we have more of that initial information. An individual forecast uh, member or individual forecast ensemble is called an ensemble member, just like a band. You have the band ensemble, the trumpets make up as a member of that ensemble. You have the uh, whatever else is in a band, the clarinets and things like that. So keep that in mind. Ensembles are a great tool to use early going. This is some of the examples. These are the examples. I pull these from weathernerds.org. Uh, great resource if you like to look at these things. But there are the different members. The European has 51 members, each again having different initial conditions in there to give us an idea. So here we go. This was for Invest 97L from August 1st on uh, the 18Z run. That's the 2 o'clock in the afternoon run. And you see there's a widespread. So some of those members on the on the left is the GFS. Some of the members want to take that system over Cuba, whereas some of them want to bring it off land early on. And then you see the different range of outcomes. That black line, that thick black line there, is what we call the ensemble mean. It's the mean of all of those members. You have a couple that sometimes are out to lunch, like this one that takes it all the way out closer to New Orleans. Each one of those, though, should be treated as uh, its own run, so to speak, so you never throw anything out, even if one member is kind of way out there because you could end up watching things change, and the trend is important to watch when you're talking about ensemble forecasting. On the right side, that's going to be the European ensembles, and same kind of deal. Each member represents a different spot where that storm could track. You see on the further west side, the darker blues start to show up. That means it's also going to be a stronger storm. Of course, that's more time over water. Further east is going to be a weaker system, but a better shot to impact the state of Florida. So again, that's an example of an ensemble forecast from uh, Invest 97L on August 1st. And again, you use those in the early going especially. You can use them at all the time, but nonetheless, uh, very helpful when you don't have a ton of information. Then we have the hurricane models. Now these are specially designed for hurricane forecasting. And these are only run though 
after the hurricane center designates a disturbance as an invest. So that's why it's so important to have the invest. And we make a big deal about it that something has been designated an invest because we get all the fancy high-tech tools uh, that NOAA runs and we get better information so a couple of these models that we have we have the h war for the hurricane weather research forecast it's used again primarily it is for hurricane forecasting and then we have the multi-scale ocean coupled non-hydrostatic we have some big stuff going on here again there's a lot of math there's a lot of physics built into all of these models that's the hmon that you might see hurricane analysis and forecast system this is brand spanking new it really came out last year this is the halves model there's halves a and halves b and again there are different things that the that make up these models different math different physics and things like that in them and they typically have different outcomes so we're going to break this down from track and then for also intensity and you're going to see there's a difference here so the winners really for both are going to be the consensus models we haven't really talked about consensus models much but that's taking some of the averages of a bunch of different models forming a, con a consensus and then that won the prize here it's important to note more often than not the hurricane center wins when they do the verification they beat out all of the models in terms of the individual model for 2023 in the short range we're talking up to about 72 hours the european was the winner so the big euro everyone says euro is king i will say so far in 2024 it has been terrible with barrel it all of its ensemble members and the operational model itself the deterministic model as we call it that point forecast run was taking barrel into mexico it obviously made hand, land, landfall way up the texas coast and impacted houston so it has been way off it's also flip-flop considerably for invest 97 l so something to keep in mind that even the winners have bad days medium range the halves b the new one so that we're talking about something up to 120 hours out. So several days away last year in 2023, the halves B took the cake for the track. Now for the intensity, it's a different animal. Again, we talked about the consensus model came out on top of that. But for the individual models in this short range, the H Wharf won. A couple of things to note here. A lot of people dial these up when we have a tropical wave without that's an invest but without a defined center. These are really run for trop when these things get a low level center and we have the tropical depression. So there could be more error than normal before they are getting into that tropical depression, tropical storm category. So keep that in mind. Last year though, the short range, the, the H wharf took the cake on that in the medium range again into that few day to five day time frame into that window the hmon was the winner for intensity so if you want to look yourself to kind of see what's going on with these things and track these storms alongside us those were the two best performing models back in 2023 now a couple of things to remember before we get into my favorite models to use um you want to make sure that you're not making decisions based off of computer models okay the official forecast typically beats all of the models anyway again in the long run make sure that you're consulting that hurricane center forecast of course we the pinpoint weather team and new six are showing that official forecast and then putting our own expert forecasting flavor into that as well so again it's important to consult all of the official forecasting and not a model uh remember your life is at risk in a lot of these cases especially when you're talking about a major hurricane models are going to be gospel not guidance okay so that's important to remember no one model is ever going to be perfect forecasts aren't perfect and we don't claim to be but nonetheless models are guidance not gospel they're a tool in the toolbox this is also an important one garbage in garbage out i talked about the uh, importance of ensemble forecasting if you have say the model putting out the center of circulation north of cuba when we're really seeing the low level center of that storm developing south of cuba it's not going to end up where that model thinks okay so it's important to know what is going on using the satellite data using other things a lot goes into forecasting than just reading those computer models and that's why i always say take what you see on social media with a grain of salt especially early on because the gfs in particular 300 hours out could be spinning up a monster hurricane but then the next run it's completely gone so they can drive you crazy. Another thing to note, I'll go back to the intensity. Um, 
the GFS, the Euro, those global models that we started off the show with, that we started off the segment with, those should not be used for intensity, okay? Those are always going to underdo it. They're great for track or they're better for track, but for intensity, you want to make sure that you are looking at this. If you're forecasting, again, remember to always consult the Hurricane Center forecast, but again, the GFS, the Euro, models like that, they are likely going to undersell the the intensity of these storms. Okay, so for my favorite uh, forecast or models to use, of course, once the hurricane models start being run, I like the H Wharf. It did really well with the track back in 2017 for Hurricane Irma. It picked up on that dip towards Cuba and then eventually the West Coast again. So I've been partial to that one uh, for a long time back in 2017, of course. Uh, I also like the Icon model. We talked about that earlier in the show. It did really well for Barrel. It was on the early going, one of the only ones to take it far north into northeast Texas. So it has done really well in 2024 so far. So that's one that I like to use as well. But again, you got to look at a bunch of them. Each model are different. They do some things well, some things not well. They each have different biases. It's important to know that as well. So it's not just as cut and dry as just going on social media and looking at the model. You have to do a lot of the meteorology work to see what could be steering it. What are the ocean temperatures? Is it going to go over that loop current that's hanging out in the Gulf? Things like that. Um, but another reason why I like the H Wharf and kind of that caution thing as I, as I bounce around here all over the place as things just kind of fire off into my head. Um, the H Wharf did really well with Michael. Obviously, Michael 2018 Cat 5 started off as hardly anything. It was forecast by a lot of models to be a tropical storm at landfall. We know the rest is history. It rapidly intensified into a Cat 5. The H Wharf caught it. So a lot of times the H Wharf is going to come back hot, meaning it oversells the intensity, but it is designed to pick up on some of those processes that were to go in to rapidly intensifying. So it was one of the only ones showing that rapid intensification, which is likely why a lot of the forecasts kind of throw it out. But it did go on to doing pretty well with Michael. But again, remember, models are guidance, not gospel. But I just wanted to share with you some of my favorites, some of the ones that were doing well uh, in 2023, some of the ones in the early going of the 2024 season that were doing well. But remember, models are guidance, not gospel, and take them with a grain of salt whenever you see them posted on social media without context.